Well, good morning. Oh, it's very somber in this place this morning. Don't worry, you're here. Everybody else that decided to stay in their warm beds and stay in their warm clothes and drink their warm coffee and say, well, I'll just watch online. Bless them anyway. But we, I know, look, I know there's a good group of people that are in New York. I'm not going to say who, but we're going to get them later. And I know some other people are gone too. But listen, uh, this beautiful group of people that decided to show up. Because, I, look, I already know, look, we, I own a gym, okay? And so one of the conversations that we have in November and December is, look, the holidays are coming. And for whatever reason, we like to get real comfortable during the holidays. And then also during the holidays, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure to perform. There's a lot of pressure to get things done. And, you know, like some of you, you're scrambling your brains right now. Man, who do I got to get a gift for still? I'm trying to think. See, you're thinking about that. Miguel, don't do that. Just think. I mean, I'm sorry, Stevie, don't do that. You had the, the glasses and the hat on. Stevie, don't do that. Just focus in on the word that has been changing your life. Yeah. Focus in on that. And so this morning... Um, I just want to encourage you, um, open up your hearts, okay? We're going to talk about three things this morning, kindness, goodness, and generosity. And I know Friday is going to be, um, it's going to be a good time. So make sure you're here on Friday. Come on out. We're, um, we're going to have a nice setup uh, with some characters. We're going to have hot chocolate. We're going to have some sweet bread. We are going to have a good time. But ultimately, we are going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate a miracle. We're going to celebrate something that we should be celebrating. Um, the same way we celebrate the resurrection is the same way we should celebrate the birth. Because without the birth, there is no resurrection. And so it's important that we come and understand why we're here. And so thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Like I said, uh, it's one of those days where we could just get under the blankets, put on a movie, and just relax. But I'm glad that we are here this morning. So are you ready to receive the word? So I, um, I love Jake. Jake is, uh, Jake is one of our tech guys, and he's our sound guy. And every Saturday, I send him um, my, my points. And um, I sent them to him, and he got them all done and ready. But as I was continuing, um, as I was continuing in the parking lot of General's Cafe last night, <laughs> because my daughters went to their first winter formal. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> No, don't say yeah, woo. No, uh, -uh. no, nope, mm, mm. I'll, I'll, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get anything done last night. And so I, um, I picked them up from from Delano High School because all the high schools met there and they had their winter formal there. And when I picked them up at 10 o'clock when it was over, they wanted to go to Denny's. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take you guys to Denny's, but I'm gonna pick you up in an hour. But I couldn't go home. So I went to McDonald's, got me some fries, and I parked in the parking lot at General's Cafe because I needed to be close to them just in case something went down. You know, dad needed to be there to protect them. So as I was there, one of my, one of my points changed. So I want to get into this as we close um, our series, and you're going to see the numbers wrong. That's okay. That's on me. Okay, I ended up texting Jake later that night, but it's okay. Um, as we talk about uh, for what it's worth. And we've been talking about this uh, heavily for the last two months. And we've been saying this. We've been saying that you pursue what you value. Thank you. That you, at the end of this life, at the end of your days and your weeks, at the end of this year, you just go back and you really think about all that has happened in your life and take account for what it is that you pursued in your life because whatever you pursued, that's what you valued most. So, man, you're showing up on Sundays, you're in the Word of God, you're hearing the Word of God, you're like, man, I need the Word of God. The beautiful thing about the Word of God is the, the Scripture tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does that mean? That means He never changes. That means the Word of God never changes. But you know what the beautiful thing about the Word of God is? Is that God never changes, His Word never changes, but His Word is always changing me. His Word is always changing you. So what I want to tell you is that this is what's going to sustain you. This is the foundation that you can build something good on there's nothing else in this world that you could build upon that's going to be as sustainable as the word of God Amen. it'll never change and that's good because we can go back and we can look at things that were written thousands of years ago and they still apply to our lives today 
So if you're taking notes, the very first thing that I want to talk to you about um, is, number one is this, is to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving. Let me say that one more time. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving. In a season of, uh, uh, that's supposed to be expressed with joy and, and gratitude and laughter and, um, man, just a season that should be exciting for us, it also becomes a season that can be very stressful for us. And it's very important to understand in our lives that one of the characteristics that the Scripture, um, man, just really pulls on us to build is kindness. We see that in the book of Galatians chapter 5. You don't have to go there, but we see that in there when the Scripture begins to tell us about the fruit of the Spirit. And it mentions, there's nine, and it mentions one of those is kindness. And we all know what that is. We all know what that means. We all know what that entails. It could be an act. It could be a smile. It could be a hug. Man, it could just, you just, you got to get out there. I mean, listen to me. I mean, we're going we're gonna to be in a busy week this week. I mean, don't be fighting over parking spaces, okay? Be, be, be nice. Listen to me. Be nice to everyone. Man, they, they try to cut in line when you're paying, and this a long line. I mean, you just be nice. Excuse me, I was here first. Don't get all crazy. You don't got to get all go. We don't need the old you coming out right now. We need the new you, the one that's in Christ, to stay there. You understand? Listen, people that are working during the holidays that work, you know, you know in the hospitals or retail or the food service industry, be nice to them. Nobody wants to be working on Christmas Eve or Christmas, but you get to go and you get to order your Starbucks. Be nice to them. They get your order wrong. It's okay. Pastor Kathy, don't say oh. <laughs> they get your order wrong. You, you Listen to me. You keep your heart in the right place. You guys are laughing, but I'm being serious. You keep your heart in the right place. They're out there working hard. Listen to me. They're out there working hard. You be generous and you tip them well. Let me say that one more time. You be generous and you tip them well. What if the service is bad? Well, you tip them well enough because you have no idea what they're going through. Man, I don't want to get ahead of myself right now, but be kind, compassionate, come on, and forgiving. Amen. Ephesians, go there with me. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 out of the Amplified. It says this. Look at it. It says, be kind and helpful to one another. Be tender hearted which also means to be compassionate and understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. So always, listen to me, always, always, always do your best to, to wear compassion on you. Always do your best to let that be a lens that you see through. What is compassion? Compassion is your ability to, to not get upset with other people before you take the time to think about what they're going through in their lives. To be kind to someone and to be compassionate to someone, to be kind, it, it costs you nothing. The only thing it costs you is you, is you moving away and resisting um, the temptation to want to get frustrated or angry in a situation and instead to tell yourself, no, that's not who God called me to be. God called me to be loving. God called me to be kind, to show kindness. And, and while I show kindness, I will be compassionate. And when I'm compassionate, I want to be like Jesus. And if I'm going to be like Jesus, then I'm going to be able to look at people the way Jesus looked at people. And if I look at people the way Jesus looked at people, then I'm going to know that I cannot just judge them for what they're doing in this moment right now. There's got to be a backstory to it. So be kind, be tender hearted, meaning to be compassionate and always be forgiving. Come on. I don't need to. I don't think I need to go there with a lot of you with that because we talk about that almost every single Sunday. That forgiveness should be a part of who you are. Forgiveness is what's going to set you free. Forgiveness is what's going to bring real peace, true peace, true joy in your life. This is godly forgiveness. This is just not this is just not some sort of vain idea of forgiveness. I can guarantee you, some of you in this place, you need to forgive. Amen. You need to love. You need to show kindness and compassion. You need to be that person. You know, we have no, we have no clue. Like, um, 
you know, my wife and I, thank God, my, wa- my wife took a day off, so she's here at church, bless her heart, and so she's able to be with us this morning. Um, but we were driving, uh, we were in Bakersfield, and then we, we stopped. We, uh, you know, you either, you either really like it or you don't care for it at all, but we really like raising canes, okay? We like raising canes, we like, we like going there, that's kind of like a, a place that we'll go to if we want to get something really quick, but we like their chicken tenders, we like their french fries, we like their dipping sauce, and we like their, we like their Texas toast, all right? Don't judge us, but that's what we like. And uh, if we get a Raising Cane's in Delano, we're going to be in trouble because we already got an in and out getting ready to open. Crumble just opened, and Chipotle's opening. So it's already a lot of trouble for us. And so we were, we were driving through, and we went off uh, to the one on California. And uh, as we were pulling up, um, I, have, I, I don't know how, um, I don't know how they, they, they do it. I don't know how the homeless sleep outside. Um, I mean, here in the Central Valley, I mean, it, it's not as cold as some other places, but it's cold. But there was a couple of people out there that were, you know, had their signs up. And I know all of us, we, I know we have good hearts, but I know a lot of times we're skeptical and cynical. But the good thing about being kind is that you don't always have to give people money. You can give them food because you can't do anything wrong with food other than throw it away or eat it. And so uh, we saw somebody out there. And so I was like, you know, of course, like, I'm going to get him something to eat. But while we were in the drive-thru, there was, um, which, which was kind of scary, there was a guy that walked into the drive-thru. Yeah, walked in the drive-thru and was, you know, having people roll down their money, and he was asking for, you know, money. And so I said, no, I said, but I'll, I'll get you something to eat if you want something to eat. And that's kind of when you can, that's kind of when you can tell where people are at. Because yeah. they don't want anything to eat, then, oh, well, then I, I'm, like I said, it's between you and God whatever's going on in your life. And so I got him something to eat, but I didn't forget about the other guy that was standing out in the front. And so I got him something to eat too. And so, or my wife and I. And so as we're pulling out, um, I told him, just wait at the end and I'll, and I'll give you your, your food. And I said, what do you want to drink? He told me what he wanted to drink. And so we pulled out and I gave him his food, okay? Simple act of kindness. N- nothing, nothing to, you know, in my opinion, it's not a big deal. And um, as I was giving him his food, the guy that was on the corner about 15 yards away had his sign, and he's watching the other guy get his food, and he gets his sign, and he throws it up in the air. And he is so upset that we got this guy food, but we didn't get him food. And so I pulled out to him, and I, and I, and I kind of yelled at him. I was like, hey, 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 hey. I said, God didn't forget about you. And so he just kind of, he didn't even say anything. He just kind of looked at me with this blank stare, and I gave him his food, and we told him, hey, listen, God bless you, you know, have a good day. But, but, I, but say, look, listen, this is, I, this is, I think, this is what I believe is, is for us as believers is how our eyes need to be open and aware all the time, all the time, no matter what's going on. Like I said, I know sometimes we can be cynical, we can be skeptical of certain things that go on in this world, but there are going to be plenty of times. Man, Jesus said it. Look, if we could eradicate poverty, that would be great, but Jesus said it. The poor you're always going to have with you. So, so it, it's our duty and it's our job to show that kind of kindness, compassion, and love to somebody. And so same thing with compassion. So we can be kind. That, that doesn't cost you anything. You can always be kind. So I'm telling you, over the next week, couple weeks coming into the new year keep that in your mind keep that fresh in your heart don't allow yourself to get frustrated with people or or situations you stay kind in order to be compassionate you have to be patient and so uh same thing we was a we had a event and um i was just telling my wife that i saw you know somebody that that is close to us that we know and it just it just looked they just you know sometimes you could just see that that people wear their heart on their sleeve and I told my wife, I said, look, man, what's, what is, is this person okay? Is everything all right? And my wife was like, yeah, you know, they're just, you know, this is what's going on. This is what's going on. I said, okay, well, I said, I think something else is going on. And so, and sure enough, right, sure enough, there was, there was more going on. There was deeper rooted things going on in that person's life. There was more pain, more struggle than, than we knew about. But, but, but this is compassion. Like the other side of me wanted to be like, why are they acting like that? You get what I'm saying? Be kind, be tender-hearted, and always be forgiving. You understand? The other side of me wanted to be like, what, what, what's for, what's their problem, right? You get what I'm saying, Candy? Like that's the that's the side of me that I don't that I don't want to be that way. You don't want to be that way. 
You want to be the side that says, man, what's going on, Lord? What's going on in their heart? What's going on in their mind? What is going on in their emotion? What are they going through right now, Lord? What's, what's, what's taking place, Lord? How can I help them? How can I love them? How can I pray for them, Lord? What are they going through, Lord? Because I want to be, I want to be obedient to you, God. I don't want to just be upset when I see somebody act in a certain way. No, Lord, I want to be kind. I want to be compassionate. And I want to be forgiving. And when I say forgiving, what I really want to tell you is that you need to be loving and forgiving to those that you don't get along with, that you don't like, that have wronged you, that have offended you. You need to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to them more than anybody else. Amen. And the scripture teaches us. Proverbs 25, 21 and 22 says, if your enemy is hungry, your enemy, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. Why? For you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. Romans 12, 17 says something very similar. It says, never pay back evil with more evil. Let me say that one more time. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord instead. If your enemies are hungry, there it is again. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, here's that saying again, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So, so, so always be forgiving in the context of loving your enemy is you, man, is you doing something kind for them and having compassion for them and blessing them, even though you're upset with them or you're angry with them, would you bless them? It's like putting a heap of burning coals on top of their head. And what does that do? That brings remorse to them. And what does remorse do? It makes you feel convicted. It makes you feel bad. And what does conviction do? It brings me to my second point. Conviction will lead you to repentance. Now, I want to talk about the goodness of God because kindness and goodness are intertwined. Kindness and goodness, they, they, they can go hand in hand, but they're not the same. They're not the same. Romans chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 says this, and it says, And do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things. And the scripture is talking about, uh, you know, Paul is writing and he's telling them, look, you, you guys are over here and you're judging all these people for doing certain things. But yet you do the same things that they do. That you're, you're, you're having a hard time keeping your heart in the right place because you're looking at them thinking you're better than them, but you're not better than them. You're thinking that you're higher than them, but you're not higher than them. You, you got to lower and humble yourself. He's saying, stop judging them, you old man. Who judge and you and those those that practice such things and doing the same that you will escape the judgment of God or listen or do you despise the riches of His goodness, His forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? The best way I can describe the difference between kindness and goodness is something like this: is that when Back in 2007, when I was not in a very good place in my life, and, and I know many of you have those years in your lives where you feel like it was just a rough time for you, a dark season in your life. Well, that was my dark season. Starting in August of 2007 was just one of the worst seasons of my life. I was just not in a good place. I was really far from um, a relationship, a true relationship with God. Um, and I remember I just... I. I a lot of things, and you guys know the story, but a lot of things took place in my life. I made a lot of bad decisions. Can, is it, can anyone say amen real quick? Just help me out here and make me not feel so bad. I made a lot of bad decisions in my life um, back Thank you so much. I made a lot of bad decisions back then. Um, uh, however, I just, I was in a low place, okay? I didn't feel like I had any worth. I didn't feel like God could use me. I felt like I really just... I let everybody down. I felt like I embarrassed everybody. I let my family down. It was just, like, just thinking about it just makes me feel bad. But I remember, um, I remember just when I moved back home from, from Bakersfield, and I was just trying to put the pieces back together. Um, I remember I was just trying to figure out what to do, but I remember a friend of mine who I still consider a friend of mine. His name was Brian. And you guys know Brian Roberts, Cliffs Construction. I remember I ta I, he had asked me, you know, was everything okay, what was going on? I kind of told him a little bit about what was going on. He's like, well, you do, do you need a job? 
And I was like, well, yeah, I need a job, you know. I'm just trying to figure out. Don't say, oh, you're going to make me cry, Irene. And so um, I was like, yeah, I need a job. And so he gave me a job. I don't know jack about construction, okay. <laughs> I, I, I was so proud. of My wife was so proud of me because I changed an electrical outlet. Angel, I changed an electrical outlet. Where's Angel? Angel, I changed an electrical outlet at my house by myself. Thank you very much. All right. Listen, I'm very talented, but I'm not the best handyman, okay? I, I, praise God for YouTube. And so, and so Brian gave me a job. Listen, I'll never forget that. Ever, ever forget that. He gave me a job, and I worked for him. I showed up early in the morning. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just following what the guys were doing. I was just doing, I think I was in, I was supposed to be painting um, a room or a closet. And I think what was supposed to be done in a couple hours, I didn't finish for the whole day. I didn't know what I was doing. But listen, but it, it was just an act of kindness on his part. Okay, understand something real quick. And I'm forever grateful for that. And I always remember that. After that, my dad came to me and he said, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just trying to figure things out. He's like, okay, well, um, he's like, do you want to come work here at the church? And this was, of course, when my dad was still here with us. And I said, well, I said, yeah, what do you want me to do? And you got to understand something. This is a person that has no confidence, does not have, well, does not have a high uh, a value or, or self-worth, doesn't feel worthy, doesn't feel like they have anything to offer. So I just said, what do you, what do you want me to do? Well, just come. Come and then and, and you can, you know, help clean up. You can, you know, I'll get you uh, an office. You can help with, you know, media, whatever it was, right? I'm, I'm explaining to you the difference between kindness and, and goodness. And so I was like, okay. So 2008, May of 2008 was when I started working here at the church. I don't know how I survived because they didn't pay me nothing, man. I have no idea how I made it along the way, but they didn't give me anything. I was living at home. I, was, I didn't know what. I didn't, I'm telling you right now, I have no idea how I made it. <laughs> By the grace of God. Amen. But listen, um, my dad put me here, and, and, and little did I know. Listen, this is the goodness of God. Little did I know that he was going to be teaching me and training me. Now, that's the difference. I'm forever, for, I'm forever grateful for what Brian did for me. I, I appreciate that act of kindness. But he couldn't fulfill what only in that season of my life my dad could fulfill. And that was showing me kindness and goodness. Do you understand? Because it's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. You have to understand the difference is that when you, uh, when you are convicted by God and you feel like, man, I got to change my life. I got to change my ways. I got to go in a new direction. You're going to feel that in your life, but you're going to need some people around you to lead you to that place, to lead you and to guide you. And that's the difference between kindness and goodness. It was the kindness and the goodness of my dad where he said, come on, I'll I'll bring you on. I'm going to give you a job. You can work for me. But little did I know, but in those seasons, uh, uh, man, I had uh, um, three years. Oh, I'm not going to cry. But I had three years. I didn't know that I only had three years left with my dad. I would have never thought that. I would have never thought that God was setting me up for something greater in my life when I feel like I didn't deserve anything. I never thought that God was going to bring my value up when I felt so worthless. I never thought that, that my dad would want to show me how to study the word of God, show me how to put a message together. I never thought that he would want me to go with him to the Philippines and, and, and preach to people. I never thought that he would take me to Africa with him. I never thought that I would preach in Africa for one of the very first times in my life, and I was so scared. That's the goodness of God. 
It wasn't just it wasn't just kindness. It wasn't just I'm going to give you a job, which I'm grateful for. It was somebody that took the time. You got to understand something. It's the same thing with us, church. It's the same thing with us as parents or grandparents or or, or maybe you're a leader to somebody like I love my kids and I want good for my kids and I do my best to give good to my kids. But you know what? Like I can't just be kind to them. I got to show them goodness through teaching, through guidance, through through discipline. I got to teach them what the word of God says. You understand? Like I never thought that I would only have three years left with my dad. But it's crazy because it was in those three years that God began to sprout up in me. Man, that worth. Like I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. All the old things had passed away. And behold, I am new in him. Like I had to get a hold of that for myself. I had to get past my past. I had to know that God's grace was bigger than my past. I had to know that God still had good things in store for me. I had to know that God still had a purpose and a plan for my life. Even though I felt like nothing was going right in my life, I still had to believe what his word says. That's why I told you the foundation that you build your life on, if it is the word of God because it never changes it will always change you do you understand the difference between kindness and goodness oh they twin a little bit but there's a huge difference a huge difference to know that that it's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance Psalm 31 19 says oh how abundant is your goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you and worked for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. Oh, how, how abundant is your goodness. Do you understand? The riches of his mercy, his kindness, his grace. He lavishes that upon us. The reason some of you are, are even here is because he loves you so much. The reason some of you are here is because his grace has been poured upon you even when you did not deserve it. The reason that I'm here, see, some of you, you, you walk into this place, you don't really know who I am, and you think, man, like this guy, man, so, I mean, maybe you think the word, you know, he's just a good speaker, you know, blah, 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 you know, and I get that. I, I, I try. I mean, I love it. Like, the Holy Spirit does works in me. I try to say that a lot. Like, this is not Eric. This is the Holy Spirit working through Eric. Amen. But Eric was not always like this. Everything that God has done in my life is a miracle. Everything that God has done in a lot of your lives is a miracle. It's miraculous, Carlos, that you are still here. That's why you got to wake up every day and you got to say, God, thank you for keeping me. It's your goodness. It's your grace. It's your mercy that has kept me all these years. Some of you that are here, that's, listen, that's why, that's why like when, when everybody shows up, we're only a few of you show up. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not moved by I'm not moved by numerical, you know, positions of people and where they're at. Whoever's going to be here is going to be here. My job is to deliver a message to you. My job is to preach the gospel to you. And that's it. That's the bottom line. But see, I didn't know what God was doing in that season from 2008 to 2011. And to think. That man, that was this. You guys got, you guys got. I'm telling you, man, you got to give God more credit than than you give Him. You have to give Him more credit. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed with our lives. You get so overwhelmed with your life. There's so much pressure to perform. You get so overwhelmed with everything going on, man. All the struggles, all the pains. And once again, I never belittle those things. I always say that. I know those are real. I know we go through things in our lives. We go through difficult seasons in our lives. I know that. But you got to give more, more credit to God. The fact that we even get to be here is a miracle. But we don't think like that at times. We just think, oh, the church. No, don't think like that. There's a lot of people that would love to be here that are not here. So you, my brother and sister, need to understand Kindness, compassion, forgiveness, and goodness. Man, goodness is, is it's righteousness in action. It's you being able to lead and guide and teach others the way someone has led and guide and taught you. 
It's you being able to pour into someone else. And so that's, man, that's, that's the mantle that I, that, I, that I chose to take for the last almost 15 years now. The last five years, more than, you know, more than ever. I know what God did for me. You have, you have no idea all that God has done in my life, what he's brought me out of. You have no idea of where I used to be to where I am now. You have no idea of like, man, what I think of when I think of when I think of his goodness. Is that a song? What he's done for me. <laughs> when I think of his goodness and how he set me free. I want to dance, 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 dance. Um, Bobby, you go ahead, Bobby. Yeah. So, so as parents, right? Like we just don't, we just don't, we just don't want, we just don't want our kids to, to just grow up and, 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 you know, we do everything for them. Man, we want to. We want. We want them to grow up, and we want to teach them. We want to teach them. We want to love them. We want to. We want to protect them. My kids are growing up. It's fast. Come on now, anybody. It's fast. But I just, I just pray and believe that I instill the word of God in them. I pray and believe that that um. That not just what I say, but how I live affects them. Amen. You understand? Yeah. See, this is why it's so important not to be so selfish. Because you think you can live however you want. You don't think it's affecting anyone. You have no idea how it affects your family. Right. Oh, man. Let me move on. Because I, uh, and my last point is this. Kindness, goodness generosity and my last point is this and i want to tell a story two copper coins number three write that down number three is this two copper coins and i want to read this story of the widow's offering in mark chapter mark chapter 12 verses 41 through 44 maria to the passion and um if you're able to switch that translation it's the tpt mark chapter 12 verses 41 through 44 and it says this, this is jesus Jesus, the scripture says, Jesus, then he, Jesus, sat down near the offering box, watching all the people dropping in their coins or their money. Many of the rich would put in very large sums, but a destitute woman. So let me, let me just, just in case destitute, it's not a good word. It means not having, or it means without basic needs, a destitute widow walked up and dropped in two small copper coins worth less than a penny. Now this makes sense to us because I'm almost positive, maybe not everybody, but if you saw a penny on the ground at the gas station, you probably wouldn't make the effort to pick it up. Maybe some of you would put it in your little coin spot in the car, but, but, but a lot of us probably wouldn't. So we can understand the value. But he, Jesus saw everybody that was rich, putting in all their money. Jesus sat opposite of the treasury so he could see what was going on. Come on, here's Jesus, the kind one, the, compa the compassionate one, the forgiving one, the one who brings goodness to our lives. Come on, without the goodness of God, we would not be here. He's watching everybody come in and he's watching everybody drop in their money and here he sees this widow. So here's what we can take from this. Here's a woman that's on her own. Doesn't have a husband no more. Obviously doesn't have much because the scripture calls her destitute. Meaning not, not having or without basic necessities. She comes in and she drops in two small copper coin, coins worth, worth, worth less than a penny. And Jesus calls his disciples to gather around. And then he said to them, I tell you, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given a larger offering than any of the wealthy. 
For the rich only gave out of their surplus. Let me say that one more time. The rich only gave out of what was not going to affect them. I'll get back to that in a second. But she sacrificed out of her poverty and gave to God all that she had to live on, which was everything that she had. Now, the context of this scripture is speaking to the matters of our heart. And when it comes to the matters of our hearts, you always have to take into account what you are giving to God. If it's, if it's offering, if it's in the context of offering, right, you know what you can do. The scripture tells us to not give grudgingly or of necessity because God loves a cheerful giver. It says, to, it says to decide in your own heart what it is that you want to give. So hear me. So, so you know what you can give to God in the context of that. All right? You know. So when you come in and, and you drop your offering off and you're like, I'm going to help some of y'all this morning. When you come in and you drop your offering on, and you're like, check that off the box, make sure everybody saw that I was up there putting my offering in. But if it's anywhere near the way Jesus described the rich, and you're like, well, I'm not rich, but listen to me. But you can, you can act like you're rich by giving something that means nothing to you. So that's one way, right? What do you give to God? You gotta ask yourself this my time now I just want to say something I, I was really proud to see some of you out there that were serving at the Christmas rally last Sunday some of you out there that that just started coming to church and you know you're fairly new and I seen you out there and I seen you apart and I seen you helping giving a helping hand you're you know helping with the presents registration with the food and I know some of us that out there man this is this is routine for us man this is not your first rodeo you're out there but listen don't take that for granted that is a privilege that God has allowed you to be out there to help so I do I did the, I've done this year after year okay don't think like that Man, I get to do this every year. This is so awesome. God, thank you for using me. Thank you that I'm out there helping my team and my church. But those of you that were helping for the first time, I just want to say I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you coming out there and being a part, that you're hearing the word of God. But listen, listen, like you, you know what you can give. Whatever it is, your time, your effort, your energy, whether it's monetary, whatever it is, you know what you can do. The question is, 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 are you giving more than, are you giving what you know you should be giving? Are you with me? Because that's what generosity is all about. Generosity is all about you going over and above. It's all about you saying, man, God, you gave me your best, so now it's my turn to give you my best. God, you, you saved me when I did not deserve to be saved, so now, God, I'm giving you my life, and now I'm going to pour my life out for others. And that's the, that's the context of the story of the widow's offering, is that Jesus saw someone that was alone, he saw someone that wanted to meet a need, but didn't have much, but gave all that they had. You got to understand something. To serve without love is vain. But to serve because of love, that's the highest form of humility. Like, like don't, don't go out or don't, don't give to be seen or don't go out to be seen or don't go out to pat yourself on the back because you're not, that's not the right attitude to have. That's to serve without love. Oh, but to serve because of love, right? To serve because I am grateful. Be I'm serving because I want change. I'm serving because I don't want to be the same. I'm serving because I am grateful. It doesn't matter if you've been here for one month, one year, 5, 10, 15, 20, or 30 years. You still have to keep the same attitude. And so we walk out of 2022. You got to walk out of here saying, what am I going to give 
for the rest of this year and what am I going to give in 2023? What's going to change? Come on. What am I going to amp up? What's it going to be? Man, am I just giving out of my surplus? Do I just come out and I give something that does not affect me one bit? Or am I saying, Lord, what is it that you would have me do, Lord? Man, you've blessed me, God. You blessed me. I believe in what we're doing. I've been out there. I've seen what we're doing. I've seen, I seen how, I've seen our cold storages uh, uh, where we have all the food. I've seen how they go out every weekend and, and serve the homeless. I've seen how we go out to the park. I've seen what we do, Lord. So what would you have me do, God? You've blessed me. You've increased me in my life, Lord. What would you have me give? Do you understand? The difference between you doing something that means nothing and you doing something that has sacrificial value. Okay, so Pastor Eric, I, I, I'm not going to lie with you. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't, I don't really have a lot. That's okay. Lord, I want to help. I want to help. Lord, my, my, my effort and my energy, man, I want that to be for you. I want that to be towards you, Lord. So where, where can I serve God? Where can I serve? Where can I show up? Where can I be a blessing to someone else? You need to understand that that's the goodness of God. That when people see you serving, you have to understand when people see you serving, when they see you giving, when they see your attitude, uh, hopefully a good, a good, a godly attitude. When they see you kind and compassionate and forgiving, when they see the goodness of God that's inside of you, what do you think that's going to do? Man, that's going to drive them. That's going to push them. And you're saying, God, I want to be generous in all that I do. I, I, I don't, and I don't mean this in a mean way, James and Irene, but I don't care that you've been serving for 30 years. You know what I mean? Like God's not done with you. God's still using you. You get what I'm saying? You're both retired, but you're not retired from the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. You know what I'm saying? Like you, and you know this. They, they, they know this. That's why I'm telling them. They know this. When we stopped the, the, the choir and the music, I mean, Irene stuck around and she still sings. But James was like, what am I going to do? Well, James is all, well, I just lateraled over. I'm an usher now. I'm going to help out with that, those guys, and I'm going to help out with that team. Irene comes up. She rotates. She sings. How old are you guys? 71 and 68. 71 and 68. Let me just say something to you. I believe there's a correlation between serving, specifically serving God and long life. I really believe that. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, things don't happen in our lives. I know that. But I just believe that. I know one of the reasons I believe that is because I see my Papa Joe. He's 93. He just, got, he just got his report from the doctor. Clean bill of health. But it's the goodness of... Claudia, cut it out. It's the goodness of God. He's too old for you, dude. But it's, it's the goodness of God. Before he moved to the, the, the beautiful, magnificent, magnificent, magnificent city of Delano, before he moved here from Orange County in Anaheim, whatever, Disneyland, before he made that move, um, him and my grandma, they, they served um, in the prison ministry over there for 40-something years, both of them, both of them together. Every week, they'd go to the prisons out in Orange County and minister to the 18-year-olds, the 24-year-olds, the 30-something-year-olds, the 50-something-year-olds. And then he decided after um, my grandma passed away, he decided he was going to move over here to be closer to us, to be a part of our church. And so, I, you know, you would think that he was going to move over here and just enjoy life. Nope. He came over here. He, he loves the Lord. He really does love the Lord. He has a, he has a really good, um, I would just say, just... just the relationship that he has with God is very precious, and I know that. But you guys don't know this, but every every weekend he gets picked up, 
and they're, serve, they're out serving the homeless. At 93, what are you doing? What are we doing? Like, man, we're just like so caught up with our lives and what's going on and with us and what we're going through and what we, you know, we get what I'm saying? Kindness, compassion, forgiveness, goodness, and generosity. So at some point, you're going to have to ask God, God, what is it that you would have me do? Come on, church, let's stand. I pray um, he can get up still. Don't, come on, Bobby Joe, don't embarrass me. I just told everybody how strong you were. So uh, the reason I said this, the, the reason I said all this was because I, I, I want you, I want you to keep your fire burning. I want you to keep your fire burning. I want you to wake up on Sundays and, 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 and tell yourself, man, I'm tired, wore out, I'm going through this, but man, I, I need, I need to get to my house. You might be in your house, but you know, you need to get to your house, this house right here. Right? Man, I've been serving, I've, I, but I've been serving for a long time, Eric. That's okay. Keep serving. Keep serving. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. Or in due season, what? You will reap a harvest. What does that mean? That means good things. That means more strength, more energy. You get what I'm saying? That means that you're going to be stronger while you continue to serve the Lord. And so that's what I desire. It's for kindness to be represented. It's for goodness to lead you and guide you. It's for generosity to, generosity to pour out of you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning. Uh, Lord, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for your word. Your word is a light that leads and guides us, God. And I pray for every single one of us, God. I, I pray that we understand what was said, and I pray that we understand what is required um, from you towards us. I pray that we get outside of ourselves, God. We move outside of us, Lord, and we lean more into you. I believe when we lean into you, Lord, that's when you become uh, uh, more relevant in our lives and you begin to show yourself mighty in the situations that we've been praying for. But God, I pray that we come to you. Help us become more kind, more compassionate, more forgiving, God. Let your goodness lead us and guide us to repentance, God. Give us peace and joy in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that, we, that you give us the widow's heart. Give us a heart that says, man, I'm willing to give you all that I have, God. And when I, when I come to you, God, whatever you ask of me, Lord, I will be obedient and give that to you. I will move outside of myself, Lord. And I will love because I know that's the highest form of humility, God. And I pray for every person in this place this morning. Every person that's going through a, a struggle or a pain or a season of, uh, of hurt. I lift them up to you right now, Lord. I speak joy and peace into their lives, Lord. I speak healing into their lives. Healing into their minds, into their hearts. Those that are struggling with anxiety and oppression and depression, God, I pray. And we speak against that, God. And we speak your peace that surpasses all the understanding, anything that we could ever try to figure out on our own. It's your peace that, we're, that will surpass all of that. And I pray that you continue to lead us and guide us. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. 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 Church, don't forget Friday. Come on, say Friday. Friday. 6.30, our Christmas service. Come on out. We're going to have pictures. We're going to have hot cocoa. We're going to have the works. So we love you. Thank you, Jesus. You guys are quiet. Ooh, that's a bright light right there. Are those new? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but praise the Lord. Um, it's good to be, like I said, in the house of the Lord. Amen. We are excited. And I know that probably on the announcements, and Pastor Eric will be announcing, but I'm going to say it because it doesn't hurt to hear it more than once. Amen.
Amen. So this Friday, December 23rd, we will be having a special evening service celebrating Christmas. Christmas does fall on a Sunday, so we will not, not have Sunday morning service. Everybody say, aw. 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 <laughs> However, we will have New Year's Day service. So you better be out here on that brand new year, starting New Year's Day right, 20, January 1st, 2023. Wow. Amen. I know. Who would have thought? Do you remember the year 2000 and everybody was all kind of panicked because 1999 was going, I know some of you are like, I wasn't even alive, but, <laughs> but some of us remember <laughs> 1999, and we're going into the year 2000, and they just thought all kinds of things was going to happen. Y2K, is that what it was? Y2K, all your computers, everybody's going to, everything's going to glitch, and, but, uh, well, we're still here 23 years later. Wow, that is amazing. Amen. And then next year, well, 2023. HD Church celebrating 40 years. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to have a great big celebration, right? That's a milestone right there. Amen, because a lot of times churches don't stay open that long. Amen. And they don't have the same pastor. Amen. I'm still here, guys. <laughs> Amen. I don't expect to be gone till Jesus comes. When Jesus comes and I'm gone, then you're going to be, if you're here, oh, Jesus, don't be here. That's all I know. <laughs> but if you are, well, start preaching to whoever's here, right? <laughs> That's what they say, right? So praise the Lord. But anyway, I went on all kinds of rabbit trails, right? Pastor Eric's probably wanting me to hurry, so I will. <laughs> But uh, I just think it's good, and I, I'm excited about Wednesday, ser I mean, Friday service. It's going to be good. Amen. There's nothing better than worshiping the Lord um, on his birthday. Amen. Or close to it, right? So uh, be here 630, Friday, December 23rd, say 630. 630. Okay, just want to make sure. We all know, right? Praise the Lord. All right, are you ready to give? Come on. I think we should be really excited about giving. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to read a passage of scripture. It's, I believe it's found in all the Gospels, but I'm going to read it out of John. John chapter 6. We read it a lot because I like it, and I just think that we can connect with it. Amen. And when you can connect with the word and you can attach that word into your life, and then you can follow it, right? Right, so uh, G, uh, John chapter 6, verse 1 says, After this, uh, Jesus went to the other side of the lake, which is also known as Lake Galea. And a massive crowd of people followed him everywhere. And I like it because people follow Jesus. I don't know about you, but we, want, we should want to follow him. Amen. We should want to stick close to wherever he is, right? I mean, come to church as often as you can, get online as often as you can, and uh, listen to what his words say. Amen. So the crowd followed him, a massive crowd followed him everywhere. They were attached, attracted, I'm sorry, attracted by his miracles and the healings that they watched him perform. Jesus went up the slope of a hill, sat down with his disciples, and now it was approaching the time of the Jewish uh, celebration of Passover, and there were many pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem that were in the crowd. So evidently, if we read, we know how many people, approximately how many people, what, like, like 5,000 plus, you know, women, children, uh, relatives, everyone, you know, was there. Um, and it says, as Jesus sat down, he looked out and he saw the massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill for they wanted to be near him. So he turned to Philip and said, and you know what I, I like about Jesus is Jesus has everything under control. If you ever feel like your life is out of control, 
run to Jesus. Amen. Because he has everything in control. He's in control of everything. He looks at everything. He calculates everything. He, he's going to figure out how he's going to do it, how he's going to get the need met, what he's going to do to help you along life's journey. Jesus is in control. He is. Amen. So he, this is what he said. He turned to Philip and said, where are we going to buy enough food to feed all these people? And it says, Jesus already knew. That's what I like. He already knew. He already had it all planned out in his heart and in his mind. He already figured it all out. When he looked out among the massive crowd, he already figured out what to do. If God looks at your life, I'm just letting you know, he can figure out your life better than you. Amen. He knows exactly what you need. He knows where you are. He knows um, better than Santa. He knows if you've been good or naughty or nice, right? <laughs> he knows. He knows everything about your life, your ups and downs, your ins and outs, your, your, your hardships, your joys. He knows everything, everything. Jesus already knew what he was about to do. I just love that. So he knows what he's about to do in your life if you'll let him. And, and really what he said is he said this to stretch Philip's faith because he wanted Philip to take a look at everything and, and want him to use his faith knowing that he could do a miracle. He already had seen miracles, the people had seen miracles. The disciples had already seen miracles. They seen the water turn to wine. They seen healings. They seen all kinds of things. It, because if you read the Gospels, they seen it. So they knew that Jesus could do something, but, but he's trying to get Philip's eyes off of the biggest need and look at the faith behind it. And look at, look, I already know what I'm going to do, but I need you to see it with that eye of faith. I need you to believe and I need you to trust. And that's what God needs you to do. Amen. Is he needs you to trust. When you tithe and when you give, God needs you to stretch your faith and say, thank you, Lord, that you are the God that meets all of our needs. That you are the God that opens the door. That you're the God that opens the windows of heaven and pours out the blessings. Amen. That you're that God. And no matter where I'm at, and I think Christmas sometimes the season can get to people because you, you think you got to go and do all these things. And Jesus said, let me just help you. Let me just help you. Amen. Just, just stretch your faith and let me help you. Amen. And that's what he did. And, and he wanted to stretch uh, Peter's, uh, Philip's faith. And, and Philip was trying to figure this out. And he said, well, I suppose if we give everyone only a sack, it would cost thousands of dollars to buy all that food. But just then, Andrew, Peter's brother, spoke up and said, look, there's a young person here with five barley loaves and two fish. But how far is that going to go? So they're asking all these questions. And Jesus already knew. He probably already spotted the little boy. He probably already seen the little sack lunch. He probably already knew, I'm going to take that and I'm going to bless it. Amen? Amen? But the, you got to be willing. See, the little, the little person, the young person was willing to give up so that there would be more. So you got to be willing. And so, um, <clears throat> but how far would that uh, go with a huge crowd? And, and so Jesus said, have everyone sit down because this is what we're going to do. And so, uh, so on the vast grassy slope, more than 5,000 hungry people sat down. Jesus then took the, the loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God. And miraculously, I'm skipping some stuff, but miraculously the food multiplied with everyone eating as much as they wanted. Amen. That's good, church. You should be excited about that. That means God is a God of more than enough. Amen. He has more than enough healing. He has more than enough deliverance. Amen. He has a more than enough to meet every single need. God has more than enough. If we'll just stretch our faith 
and believe. Amen. And not only that, but if you continue reading, there was leftover. Amen. They went and gathered up the pieces that were left over so they wouldn't be wasted. Right? More than enough. God is more than enough to meet the needs of his people. And he already knows. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you to be that person that obeys God and trusts God and says, God, I'm willing to give. I'm willing to be a tither and a giver because I know that you meet my needs. Amen. Amen. So ushers, if you would, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Stretch your hands out. Father, we just honor you. We praise you. We thank you that you are a God that already knows. You already see the heart. You already see the the need. You already see the things that people go through, God. You know. You're, You're God. You're omnipresent. Father, and we just thank you. We thank you that you are a God that loves us and cares enough to meet every single need if we'll just trust and believe in you. I trust you, God. I trust you with every every fiber of my being. I trust you to continue to take us into a brand new year, to continue to um, have HD Church continue on reaching people, touching lives, ministering to people, God. We just thank you, God. That's why we're here, to be a light in this world. And so thank you for every gift. Thank you for every giver, God. Continue to open the windows of heaven and continue to bless their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I just want to just to say real quick thank you to everyone that helped last Sunday was our big Christmas fest. And, um, you know, it was a good time. Amen. I just was looking at the people as the, they were ministering and Pastor Eric was praying and they were just really touched. Some of those people were really touched. And, you know, I believe they needed that. And that's what that that's what Way back, Delano Christian Center, Valley Faith Fellowship, that's what we started doing years ago. And, um, and I just believe that's what we're supposed to do. Amen is reach our community and reach people. So thank you because you know what? We can't do it without you. Not just one person can do it. So we all did it. So thank you for, for making that a success. Amen? Amen.